Okay, hello, welcome to a series of updated videos looking at the economics of inflation and deflation. So these videos are being recorded in the spring of 2021. Lots of things happening in terms of inflation and deflation pressures in many different countries around the world. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the key concepts. Then we'll move on to causes of inflation, consequences, and uh, then we'll also look at uh, inflation control policies and the economics of deflation. So what is inflation? It's best defined as a sustained increase, a sustained rise in the economy's general price level. What that means is that on, on average, actually it's a weighted average, the prices of the goods and services that we buy and consume are going up over time. The cost of living overall is, is rising. As of 2020, these were the countries in the world with the highest inflation rates. And of course, Venezuela stands out as a country suffering grievously from the impact of hyperinflation. 6,500% was the average inflation rate in Venezuela in 2020. Zimbabwe's inflation rate looks low in comparison, but it was well over 600%. Prices rising uh, by you know, double digits every single month. And in countries like Sudan and Lebanon and Suriname and, is, uh, and Iran, inflation is very high. In the case of Sudan, again, well over 100% inflation. So what is hyperinflation? We just mentioned it. Well, hyperinflation is a period of extremely rapid inflation. And it's nearly always the consequence of uh, the mass printing of money by the government and or the central bank. And in a world of hyperinflation, money as an asset basically becomes worthless. Hyperinflation is also associated with economies where there's been a, a deep collapse in the level of output of real supply. So there's a lot of money, a lot of cash chasing very few goods and services. So with periods of hyperinflation, people and agents in the economy, not just people, but businesses, they lose all confidence in money and they, they try to spend it as soon as they receive it. So it has a damaging effect on savings behaviour. Indeed, uh, in, in an extreme situation, barter may take the place of cash as the preferred medium of exchange. At the other end, we may well think about deflation, and we're going to have an update video on the economics of deflation. And that's defined as a sustained period, once again, when the general price level for goods and services is going down, a negative rate of inflation. That means that the weighted basket of the goods and services that we buy is in fact becoming less expensive over time. Now, deflation is normally associated with a falling level of aggregate demand, leading to a very negative output gap where the level of production, GDP, is well below its potential. These were the countries with the lowest inflation rate in 2020. All of them, on average, were experiencing price deflation. Now, notice here that we're not talking about hyperdeflation in terms of you know, significant negative inflation. The numbers are negative, but they're not uh, very large. Nonetheless, this is deflation in countries like Qatar and the UAE, uh, even relatively fast growing Malaysia. Switzerland has suffered deflation. So, too, we know, of course, in recent times has Greece. So what is disinflation? This is often a little bit confusing for, for students. So deflation, deflation is a fall in the general price level. Disinflation is a fall in the percentage rate of inflation. But that's not enough to bring about price deflation. So consumer prices are still going up, but at a decreasing, weaker, uh, slowing rate. So, for example, disinflation would be a fall in inflation from, let's say, 7% down to 2%. Now, here's the inflation rate for the UK, up to and including the summer and autumn of 2020. Uh, the rate of inflation is measured by the annual percentage change in consumer prices, the consumer price index for the UK. Indeed, the consumer price index 12-month inflation rate was 1.8% in January 2020. Uh, and in uh, December 2020, it was down at less than 1%. So you can see here in 2015, towards the right of the chart, we doubled with deflation. Then the rate of inflation picked up again. Uh, the economy came quite close to deflation in 2015. Uh, in 2019, inflation was 1.7% on average. Uh, uh, that was below the 2% target. Another key concept, just as an introduction to our study of inflation and deflation, 
is the term inflation expectations. Now, this is going to be really important. And inflation expectations describes what people and businesses expect to happen to consumer prices going forward in the future. And normally you think about, well, what might be the inflation rate in the next year or maybe three years, even five years going forward? People need to build expectations of inflation because that helps uh, inform, inform their forecasting of what they like, think is likely to happen. Now, once a higher rate of inflation becomes established, or if you like, embedded in an economy, then it can be quite difficult to bring down. If people expect higher prices for the things they're buying, the goods and services, well, this, then, this can then feed through to higher wage claims and rising labour costs. Now, that's called the wage price spiral. And that's a situation where workers are bidding, negotiating, perhaps uh, through the medium of, of trade unions, for higher wages because they've seen their real income go down because of an increase in the cost of living. A wage price spiral can then lead to a further burst of cost push inflation and you can end up with a combination of slow growth and high inflation. Indeed, a wage price spiral was, in the UK, a feature of stagflation in the 1970s and 1980s. So what do we mean by the term stagflation? Well, stagflation uh, refers to a fairly unfortunate and certainly costly combination of three things. Slow growth, slow growth of GDP, a rising unemployment, more people out of work, and high and rising inflation. And in a situation of stagflation, it just becomes more difficult to manage the economy uh, because on the one hand, businesses and employees are suffering from a slow growth and falling production, which means less profits, perhaps some job losses. But at the same time, prices are going up, which threatens people's real living standards and often can worsen income and wealth inequalities. Um, there's some talk at the moment in 2021 of uh, is there going to be a significant return to inflation as the world economy comes out of the pandemic? And we're going to do a separate video on that with a focus on the UK. Stagflation is really what was really a 1970s and 1980s phenomenon. It's nearly always associated with spikes in the world price of key raw materials, oil, gas, copper, perhaps, and other commodities. And countries that have to import those things often see quite a sizable rise in inflation. So in this first video, we have been through some key concepts. In the next video, we're going to focus on two main causes of inflation, and that is cost push and demand pull. Okay, thank you very much indeed.